Hello, and thank you so much for joining us. This is the Getting Real Real Estate Management with Insightly webinar. My name's Michelle, and I am part of the customer success team here at Insightly. Should you need any assistance after this webinar, please reach out to us at support.insight.ly. That's our community. You can collaborate not just with my colleagues, but you can also collaborate with your peers to get answers, find best practices, but that's really the best place to initially touch base should you have any questions following this. So the goal of this webinar is to go over real estate best practices with Insightly. Part of these best practices will include getting in touch with your clients at any time, managing the status of your clients, listings and track their progress, automate recurring tasks and reminders, that way nothing is getting missed, and at the end of this webinar, there will be a 10 to 15 minute Q&A session. So I will not be able to hear you, but if you have any questions even during the presentation, go ahead and open up your GoToWebinar control panel and type in your question and I'll read that out loud and answer it the best that I can. So I'm actually going to launch a poll to get a better idea of who exactly we're working with here. Go, let us know, do you work primarily with commercial, residential, or both types of clients? And I'll leave this open for about 30 seconds or so. Okay, great. Thanks everyone so much for voting. I'll go ahead and close that out. And then just a follow up so I can get a better idea also, what challenges is everyone facing? And unlike the previous question, this is a multi-select, so if there's multiple things that are applicable, go ahead and select those and I'll get that launched now for another 30 seconds. Awesome, thanks everyone so much for participating. So really, where should you start? And the first step is going to be familiarizing yourself with organizations, contacts, and lead sections of Insightly. We'll go into each of these a little bit more in detail over the course of the webinar, but that's really the best place to start. The next step is to build your customer base. And the easiest way of doing that is to import and add any existing contacts and organizations to Insightly. We actually have a webinar that's held every Wednesday that my colleague Alyssa runs, and that's a fantastic complement to this webinar since it specifically goes over best practices in importing and managing your contacts. The next step is to link your data. And the importance of this is to ensure that nothing is getting missed nothing is being siloed, you're able to see in all in one place the relationship between all of the different records within Insightly. And lastly, you'll want to also download the mobile application if you're working with iOS or Android, since this will allow you to get in touch with your clients and important information at any time and anywhere. So what do you need to know when you're importing data? So the first place you'll want to start with is importing your contacts. Insightly does make it very easy, especially if you have an Excel spreadsheet or a CSV file or even exporting out from uh, Outlook or Google Contacts, as long as you're able to export those into one of those um, file formats. And really the idea behind this is to get everyone loaded in and get you working straight away and make this a much more efficient process. You'll also want to make sure that your import files are as complete as possible. And we do have a template, a set of templates that you can access at our knowledge base, which is at that web address just there on the bottom of the screen. So next steps. Everyone's now in Insightly. What do I need to do? The next steps are going to be understanding the difference between an opportunity and a project. 
This way you can effectively organize and track anything from a prospective client to an actual listing. The next things that we'll do is build your pipelines and activity sets. Again, this is further automating the process. It's making you more efficient. It's going to help you keep track of where your listings and clients are in the sales process. And this way you can automatically be reminded of upcoming tasks and showings. Lastly, before we jump into the demo, what you'll really want to do after this webinar is customize, customize, customize. The reason why is each person uses CRM slightly differently. So the information and how you build it out really is key to making you an insightly crusader for lack of a better word. The more that you customize the system, the more value it adds to your day-to-day -day activities. So some of the areas that you're able to customize are clearly custom fields. You can also utilize tags, notes, leads, MailChimp integration, and we also have email templates. So now I'm going to jump into the demo. So hopefully everyone's able to see my blue screen here. If you can't, again, go ahead and type that into the, the GoToWebinar control panel in the questions area and let me know so that I can get this screen switched over for you. So really, where do we want to start? And the first place that we're actually going to look at is importing your contacts. So again, by going into this section here and over here on the right, what you'll see is the import contacts and notes. By clicking on this link, this is going to show me all of the different sources in which you can import from. Again, to reiterate, you'll want to make sure that your import files are, again, as complete as you can possibly make them. So this means you'll want complete first names, last names, you'll want complete email addresses, telephone numbers. Um, also, if you plan on using tags, which is a feature I'll get into later, you can include those on the import files. Um, but essentially, you just want to have that file as finished as possible that way um, it'll bring everything in at once because there is no bulk update using um, the import feature. Uh, as I mentioned, you can bring contacts in primarily via a CSV or an Excel file, but you can also import over from Outlook, from Gmail, or from another system called Act9. If you have any notes related, so say you're uh, coming over from another CRM, you can also import notes from a CSV, but please keep in mind that this is a separate import. So you'll first want to import your contacts, and then you'll want to import the notes over. Another point is that you'll also want to make sure on your spreadsheet that you have the organization information included with your contact. And the reason why is because this will link and create that organization automatically for that contact. So to backtrack just a second, the contacts and the organizations, the difference between the two are that contacts are individual people. These are your current buyers. These are people that you're working with on a day-to-day -day basis. These could also be um, people that you're specifically working with at title companies, mortgage brokers, essentially anyone that is of importance that you should have their contact information for. Their organizations, however, are the companies that are comprised of these contacts. So to give you an example, you may have a specific underwriter that you're working with as a contact, but the organization that they work for is First Republic Title Company, for example. So that would be the difference in how you would um, search for that information. And as I said, if you're doing it all via an import and you have both completed, it'll automatically link those up. A couple of other things when importing contacts, Insightly will also check for duplicates. And so what that's going to look, like, look at is the first name, last name, and the email address of the person. So you can do imports at later dates as well. This is not just an initial um, thing that you're able to do. That being said, because it's checking for duplicates, as I mentioned, unfortunately, you're not able to do an, a bulk update using the import. Once um, the record has been created, um, you can always go in and manually edit the record by going into the file here and clicking on the little pencil icon. So when would I use opportunities and projects? 
Opportunities are where you're able to track any qualified buyers and referrals from other agents. So this is where you're going to want to place people that are actively looking for a home. Um, but the reason why I recommend putting them into the opportunities versus the projects is that you could get these potential buyers in from any other sources. You could get them from other mortgage brokers. You could get them from other realtors. So these are not necessarily quote unquote own contacts, but there are potential people that you're trying to close and actively find um, dwellings for. Whereas the projects, this is where you would manage any of the listings you're specifically responsible for. So um, this is people, this would be an actual home that you're trying to sell uh, specifically for them. So a couple of things that you're able to do in both opportunities and projects is you're able to track the overall progress of the listing or the search. So this could be the potential house, apartment, or building. One thing to say though about um, building out opportunities specifically for um, individual people is that you'll want to create an opportunity for each contact. So say you have a husband and wife looking for a home, they will have their own separate opportunity. Whereas in the projects, you would have one listing and that would be named, and we'll actually go in and demo this, but that could be named 123 Main Street, the name of the property itself, and you can then later go back in and link up any of the contacts that are potentially interested in, in that property specifically. So some things to think about when you're building out the customizations in these sections are going to be, think about what your sales process is. How many steps are there? What types of things do you want to automate and be reminded of? And you'll also want to keep these things general enough so that it can be applied to any new prospect or listing. But you also want to keep it specific enough so that anyone else or even yourself, because you could be part of a larger team, knows exactly what it is referring to. This also makes it very easy to find. So just to demo this, what I mean in, under the customizations. So this is a feature that account administrators will have. If you're not currently an account administrator, um, check with whomever is. They can give you access if this is something that you're going to take on and build out yourself. Alternately, you can kind of teach them if they're not aware of how to use these features and show them how to build these uh, features out. But the first place that I would recommend starting is in your system settings. And what you'll want to do is create a pipeline. So for opportunities specifically, what you'll want to do is build out a selling or a new listing um, pipeline, for example. So in this case, we would go into pipelines. And then the first step is going to be actually naming the pipeline. So this one would be new listing. And you can make this available for either opportunities or for projects or for both. If this is a pipeline that's applicable to both, you can go ahead and select those here. Add that in. And then over here on the right, this is where you'd actually build your pipeline out. So the first stage could be confirm listing with client. Add that stage. The next would be create marketing collateral. The next would be work with stagers. Add to MLS. Open house. Under contract and then lastly, closed. So as you can see, what this illustrates is um, a couple of different things. First of all, this is a linear and visual way of tracking exactly where in the process you are with these particular listings. So anyone can jump into that particular listing, know that you've already moved up to the open house stage, and Potentially, you could also be under contract depending on the status. 
Um, other nice things about the pipeline stages, you can search by them. So you can get a sorted list based on all of your properties that could potentially fall within a particular stage. So those are all things that you'll want to consider when building these pipeline stages out. But really, um, the key to it is making it informative, not just to yourself, but if you are also working with other colleagues, that they can also go in and have a better understanding of exactly where in the sales process you currently are at. Another feature, and this is where the automation piece comes in, of working with um, pipelines is that you can also add what are called activity sets to a pipeline. So for example, what an activity set is, is it is a template of tasks or events that you can then link up to the relevant stages of the pipeline. So for example, say I want to Say I have subtasks, more granular tasks that fall under the under contract stage of this particular pipeline that I just created. What I can then do is go in and add my under contract activity set. And just like I did with the opportunities and the projects, I can make these activity sets available for any of these particular record types. However, unlike opportunities or pipelines, the, um, the activity sets are applicable to any of these record types. So you can also apply these specifically onto a contact in the event that you actually don't want to create separate opportunities and use pipelines, though that's recommended because it will automate this process. But I can set this up for, again, contacts, opportunities, and projects, add that in. And then this is where I'm able to then go in and actually build out my tasks. So if I select task here, maybe my first task is to be contacting the title company. And a thing to keep in mind when building these tasks out is the information that's contained in this template is going to repeat any time that set of tasks is assigned. So what I recommend including in the details section is to include anything that needs to be completed in order to mark that task is done. So this would be reach out to title company um, for status. You can also categorize these. So you could categorize these into a to-do, for example. And one thing with utilizing tasks is that you'll always want to make sure that you have a due date assigned. And the reason why is because Insightly will inherently sort your tasks based upon the due dates. So even if this number might change slightly because you can always go back in and edit it, at least this way when you view the task, it's going to populate up um, around the time that it should be actually completed. So that's just something else to keep in mind. So in this case, we'll want to give it a three-day float. So you have three days to complete this from the time this task is assigned. You'll skip any days that you don't work. Most realtors, my guess is that you do work seven days, regardless of what your business cards say. But if you typically only work Monday through Friday, you can skip any days that you're not in the office. Under Assigned To, Choose When Applied allows you to select other people that this task should be assigned to. This is most useful if you're working in a team environment because you're then able to create tasks on behalf of other people. So I usually recommend leaving this as is. Visible to others makes it a public task and you can also set a reminder for any of the tasks that you create. So maybe another task that falls into this particular stage is inspection resolution. Again, this could be a follow-up. Maybe this needs to be done within 10 days. Again, skip any non-working days. And then what I'm going to do here is just continue to build out anything else that could fall into that particular stage. And then the last one will be closing. So 
So again, if you do have any questions along the way, feel free to type those into the box and I will get to those as soon as the Q&A session starts. So now that I have my activity set created, I can then go into my pipeline and link it up. So what I'll do is I'll go back into new listing, edit stages, and then I'll click the pencil next to the under contract stage. Because I named my activity set with the same naming convention as the stage, it made it really easy for me to find it in a list of the current activity sets that are in the system. So again, that's a best practice that I recommend just because it makes it easier to match this up as you're going through and building these out. So now that I actually have my pipeline created, what I'll then do is go into my opportunity section and actually build an opportunity out for this listing. So say I am working with Abby Kingston on this particular home, ranch house. And then you can even put something in like um, the address, Amy Street. Um, Abby is interested in a three bedroom home, ranch style, max budget is 300. So the description field when you're creating a new opportunity is a great place to put any additional details about the opportunity. When you're naming the opportunity, however, what I do recommend is including the primary contact name and the type of opportunity that it is you're working on for them. The reason why is because all three of these are um, search criteria. So you're able to then at a later time search and see in case you forget to link these up, exactly what's going on for Miss Abby Kingston here. Under categories, you could also set these up to mark maybe the different types of manufacturers that you're working with if you want to track that. Probability of winning. This is a number that you're going to have to determine. Um, potentially, you know, maybe if they're in the very early stages or you're having a difficult time finding a home for them, you may want to mark the probability a bit lower. However, if it's later in the sales process and you're pretty confident about it, you can mark that with a higher percentage. Forecast close date, again, this is a number that's best determined by you, but maybe you're hoping to close on this by the end of September. Responsible user, this is the Insightly user that is responsible for closing that particular deal. So in this case, if you're working just by yourself, that person's always going to be you. But if there's another broker that's currently working on that, that's whose name should populate in this field. The value is going to be the total amount um, for that home, or you can also use this field as the revenue that it will generate for your company. So in this case, you can either mark this as 300,000, since that's Abby's maximum budget, or if you were taking a 10% commission, you would instead fill this in with 3,000, I believe, or 30. Sorry, not a banker, so my math isn't um, the best, admittedly. But since I have my pipeline now created, I can go in here and I can grab my new listing pipeline. So what that's going to do is automatically put it into the very first stage of the pipeline and then as I work through with this particular uh, client or this listing, I can move it further through the um, actual pipeline. So maybe I'm in the open house stage with Abby. Under the custom fields, I'll actually show you guys how to go in and build these out. Um, but a good way of using the custom fields for opportunities is to um, put in possibly what their maximum budget is. You can also create additional fields maybe to track your specific commission on it or um, the number of bids maybe that have been placed on that have been placed by that buyer. So just things that you know may be useful for you to track or to know that Insightly does not inherently come with. Lastly, what you'll want to do is link it up to any contacts that it's relevant to. 
save that and then I'll save my opportunity and now that's going to actually create my opportunity so now if I look down here this is my pipeline so I can quickly and easily know I'm currently in the open house stage with Abby I can also come in here track notes I can put in notes based on you know any feedback she's given me about her um, whether she likes the properties I've shown her um, whether she's specifically liking one particular property and why but I can track all of that information here that way either myself or anyone else can access it at a later date I can also attach files so if I have actual photos of the homes that she's looked at this is a good place to input that information so to move through the pipeline once you have this created it's very easy to do all you have to do is go into the opportunity itself and this is going to function very much like the project site as well select change stage and it will then move it on to the next stage and as you can see here since I have my activity set set up as well these four tasks since I'm now moving into the closing stage will then automatically be assigned to my opportunity this way if I'm looking at my tasks here I can very quickly and easily get a list of all of the things that I need to follow up on and work on specifically. So I'm hoping that's helpful and fairly clear. I know that this can be a lot of information. So what I'm going to do next is go in and actually build out a pipeline for a listing. So you can see a possible way of also building that out. So in this case, we'll want to name this as selling a home, make this available for projects, add that in, again go into edit stages, and then maybe the first stage is making flyers, set up, open house, conduct walkthroughs follow up with leads and again you don't have to use these these are really just general templates so that you have an idea of how you can set these up but these are completely customizable so go ahead and make these your own like I said earlier customization really is the key to making this um, clear for you So again, maybe I then also want to create an activity set so I have an actual task assigned for going in and making flyers. Just like I did earlier, I can go into the activity set section, do making flyers, have that applicable to my projects, add that in. And then create my making flyers task. And this can be marked as a to-do. Maybe you want to give yourself three days to complete that. Add that in. And then I can go back to my pipeline again. Go into edit stages and link up my activity set. So in terms of managing a listing to show you how the project side works, what I would do is I would come in here to new project and this is where I would name it with the property name. Name street, um, bedroom, ranch, home, currently listed at 325000 so again, what you can put into the description is anything specific about that property or anything that's helpful for you to know about that listing. Um, you could also put things like tenant is still living there, uh, showings by appointment only, for example. Again, you can categorize these. So maybe again, this is another KB Homes. 
respons whose responsible is going to work exactly the same way as under the opportunities. And then what I'll want to do is add in my project pipeline. So again, for the custom fields, what you're able to do is put in things like the number of units, the number of bedrooms, number of baths. You could also put in things uh, like I, I did up here with the description. You could say, is tenants currently still living there? You could create a checkbox field that would mark as yes or no. Again, you'll want to link this up. So maybe this is for Anthony Graves. That's the person that's actually selling the home. And then as you can see here, by linking it, it makes it very easy for me to get his contact information in case I need to reach out to him. So once I add my project on, because I had that activity set created, my task is going to automatically be created so I can go in and start working on my flyers. And since I've already completed that step, I can then move on to setting up the open house. But those are just two ways that you're able to potentially manage your real estate um, listings and your clients using Insightly. The leads feature is a great place um, to put any new potential buyers. So commonly as real estate um, people, you guys will send out marketing collateral um, somewhat in blast. These could be postcards. These could be um, welcome to the neighborhood greetings. Uh, these could also be referrals, but leads can be a great place to put anyone that has maybe responded back to specifically um, any of that marketing collateral that you've sent out. So anyone that's potentially not put a listing with you yet, because that's going to be a project, but say someone contacts you and they're like, hey, I am interested in selling my home. Can you tell me a bit more about your background? You could go in and create a new lead specifically for that client. Again, what you'll want to make sure to do is enter as much personal information about them as you can because what's going to happen if you actually convert that lead over is it will then create an opportunity and a contact for that particular lead. So just to show you what that looks like, I can go into Kristen Burnett, come into my actions menu, convert, and that will then create those specific records. So then you're not having to manually go back and re-enter any information. So customization. Uh, again, customizing is really the important piece of making the data your own and letting it tell you the important information that you specifically need. To create custom fields, which I mentioned previously, I can come in here go to system settings and then under custom fields this is where I'm able to build them out so if I wanted to create again my number of bedrooms or the number of units that are in a particular building say you're working in commercial real estate I can go in build that out save it and then that way I have the information that's easily referenceable. So then if I go back into my projects and I want to get a list of all of my current listings that maybe have two bedrooms, I can go in here, do number of bedrooms is equal to two, add that in, and there's my listings. So again, it makes it very easy for you to go back through and find important information that you're specifically interested in finding. Um, ways that you're able to use tags. Tags are great for labeling the type of contact, opportunity, or project that you're working on. In terms of labeling a contact, these could be the contact type, whether this person is a realtor, a title company, or a qualified buyer. And the way of adding a tag on is you can either do this in bulk by selecting multiple people here from this list, Coming up here to manage tags, I'm doing the tag that you want to add in. You can also use the tags as a filtering criteria. So there's my list. Or I can go into individual contacts and add my specific 
tag. So we know that he's a seller. Save that. And he's also been tagged. Ways that you're able to tag opportunities could be the type of home that the buyer is interested in, such as Victorian or ranch. And for projects, you could put in the type of listing, whether it's commercial or residential. I briefly touched on using notes, uh, but this is also a great place for adding any information on listings that you don't own to the contact or the opportunity. So say again, I was working with Abby Kingston and I was referred about a home that was located at 425 Lakewood. But maybe this is not a property that I own. Maybe this is one that is being sold by uh, John Atkinson. And in the notes, you could put in the address or uh, the selling price, 250000 Spoke with Abby in regards to it. Not interested currently, but could be a backup. So once I've added my note on there, as you'll see here, this is going to aggregate. So I'm able to then go back and specifically look at my note in case I need to refer back to it later. So again, it's just a quick and easy way of being able to find important information when you need it. Um, Two other features that we offer are an integration with MailChimp. So MailChimp is great for sending out any mass emails, anything that's maybe over 50 persons per send if you want to use an unsubscribe. So this could be a great way of getting people in uh, that you're sending marketing collateral to, for example, and tracking that. Um, or the other option is Insightly has an email template system. And this is really good for uh, any type of recurring correspondence. So for example, if during the closing stage, I needed to send a bunch of documents out to my client, what I could do is come in here, do new template, could be closing. Again, you can categorize these if you want. Create a new category if one does not exist. And then from the email subject down, that's what's actually going to be sent to your client. So in this case, you could do your closing docs. You could do hello. And then if you use this option here, insert fields, what that's going to do is personalize the message without you having to type it. Here are the closing docs. Uh, we need these back as soon as possible. Uh, should you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. And then you can actually go in and attach any closing files to the template. What I recommend adding to the template is any blank documentation. Anything that's more specific, you can go in later and manually attach that. But once you have the template saved, I can then go into Abby actions, email this contact, grab my closing docs, add any additional files, and then I can send that specifically out to her. If you don't already know, Insightly has a great way of working on the go. That's our Insightly app, which is both available for iOS and Android. It's a completely free app that you can either download via the Google Play Store or the Apple App Store accordingly. All you need to do is type Insightly into the search bar and select the option of downloading the app. Once you have it downloaded, it should appear in the list of available apps on your system. To enter, go ahead and type on the Insightly logo sign in as you normally would with the same credentials that you log into the desktop application and you will then be brought here to the home screen. As you can see, there's a ton of information right at your fingertips that you can easily work with on the go. If, for example, you were at a home showing and quickly needed to get a list of tasks and follow-ups that you need to work with, you could tap your tasks option, look at your filters, and see what needs to be done and what is currently overdue in the system.
Additionally, if I'm working with a contact, I can also drop into my contact section here and either add a brand new contact using our handy business card scanner or the new contact option. Just be sure that you're adding as much information as you have about that contact straight away. And there you go. Simple as that. You can also easily look contacts up. Similar to the same workflow and options as you see in your address book. And as you're working additional opportunities for your clients, you can also jump in and get additional details should you need them. But really, the whole idea behind using the Insightly app is to make sure that you have the information that you need readily at your fingertips, regardless of where you're working from. So I'm hoping that this was helpful for everyone. And what I'm going to do is just do a very quick recap. So what did we cover? Um, hopefully, everyone has a better idea of how to stay organized and on top of what's important regarding your real estate business. Specific features that we covered were opportunities, projects, tasks, pipelines and activity sets, and we briefly touched on the Insightly calendar. We also went over how these features can make your life easier. Ideally, this is to improve your organization, improve your internal collaboration, and improve your efficiency to help you keep loyal, happy buyers, customers, and improve your overall customer interaction, this way giving you more time to actually spend with them and on them. As I mentioned previously, please definitely leverage our online community and our knowledge base. That can be reached at support.insight.ly. There's additional videos on how to set these features up. You can collaborate with other people that have worked in real estate and have specifically customized Insightly out. So again, it's a really good resource. We also have other upcoming webinars. I did mention the managing your customers with Insightly webinar specifically because that's a good complement to this one because it will show you exactly how to get started uh, with importing your contacts in. So let's go ahead and get started with the Q&A session.